Hello, this is Invector and welcome to my newest How to Fire 4 video. In today's video, I am going to show you how to win a simple war with a simple country. So we are going to start a new game, 1936. We are starting as Germany and we will be taking Iron Man mode on and historical AI focuses on so we know what's going to happen in our game and know that we only have until 1941 until the United States joins the World War II so we need to start uh, our war and finish it by 1941 so that uh, United States doesn't join allies. So let's start our game. Speed the game up first. Uh, let's pick our national focus. So let's just start with four year plan. Let's start with that. With research we're gonna start with uh, the research speed and the production and the construction. And for the lost spot, you can do uh, artillery or infantry equipment. Uh, let's start off with artillery, why not? Uh, so, we have to ask ourselves, are we going to start a war in two years? And the answer is yes. So, I'm gonna build military factories then. And with production, uh, we need a lot of guns. Let's do this. We need a lot of support, let's do this. We need a lot of artillery. We don't need tanks, we need trucks and two is enough. Uh, with fighters and cas, uh, let's say BF-109D. This is the probably simplistic uh, fighter that you can find in the game. Uh, let's keep doing that. And do uh, this guy. Uh, we don't really need this, we can keep doing it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and this this plane... Okay, we don't need this plane. Let's just remove this. And the ships, it doesn't really matter what ships we do, but let's just finish off the ones that we are uh, already producing. Because it, the, the country has worked on that, uh, so let's just finish it up. Let's not waste it. Uh, this could be deleted, I guess. Might as well delete these as well. And let's add a convoy. Maximize this. We go to trade. Uh, we need to buy rubber. Let's buy it from Siam. Cancel this. Okay, this is gonna go out on its own. We don't want to cancel these, we don't want to do these. Uh, we could do the raids, but they're not really important. Uh, we need to gather our army. So, who are we going to attack first? We are going to annex Austria with Anschluss, and then we are going to annex Czechoslovakia with the fate of Czechoslovakia. Then we will fight Poland and United Kingdom. So, we need to uh, have armies ready for Poland and... Uh, United Kingdom. So I'm going to uh, let's just pick all of these guys. So we have one truck. We have three tanks. And six more units. So these ten will be used to make a naval invasion. So I'm just going to start up making my naval invasion to uh, United Kingdom. Because why not? We need to do that anyway. So this is going to haul. Actually, these shouldn't go to haul because they are mobile divisions. These two should go to here. That's that's the way to go. These to haul. These to here and here okay and these 20 guys well uh, also uh, you can send volunteers to Spain but uh, we'll be fighting a war pretty soon so I don't want to do that and these 20 guys just uh, can stay here uh, let's put these on to field marshal we don't have any CP yet uh, and Let's just wait until this, when the CP comes along. 
let's uh, well we don't need to train these guys but let's switch these up to infantry and train those two okay uh, we are ready to go we just need to make our uh, four-year plan and then get our civilian factories and in the meantime we need to produce a lot of guns and uh, produce a lot of infantry to deploy them and get the required manpower needed to do Anschluss and other focuses basically. So this is our infantry template which is like uh, 18 width combat width just basic infantry with uh, artillery and engineer. We can just add more artillery later on but uh, for now let's just put two of these and make more guns because we are gonna need a lot of guns to uh, put a lot of units on the map. Okay, let's start playing then. By the way, we can also ask military access from Italy because they're friendly to all uh, brown ideology factions. You can just ask for military access. And uh, later on, they'll want to join our war anyway, so... Okay, four-year plan is done. Let's continue on with autarky. And we can hire someone. Uh, civilian factory, construction speed. We don't need that guy because we are never going to build civilian factories. So let's continue. But uh, we can do other things with other guys, I think. Especially the political power guy. We can hire him. We can also get uh, guys like these, but... It's more important to get the political advisor first, so... Let's continue with uh, another resource speed. We have 150 PP. We can get the silent workhorse, but... Uh, I think there was another better guy, but let's see. That's why I suggest looking at, op at your options. Because like th there there can be better guys to hire, so this guy gives heavy fighter production cost and political power gain. We don't need this. We are just going to get uh, Borman. So we now gain a lot of um, political power as we are building military factories. Uh, we are going to get uh, this notification. So let's just put more into infantry equipment, even more. And then artillery, because we are going to need to build up our artillery. And we are also deploying divisions, so... Let's put these four guys onto this army. And let's train them up. We can also research radio. But I'm going to continue with this instead. We are building it up with MIA. And we can actually get production efficiency gain. So let's do that. Also, I forgot to mention, you can actually switch these and add the whatever thing that you want with um, uh, army XP. But we don't really have army XP yet, so I'm just going to not do that yet. Otaki is done, let's continue with this. Basic mission tools is done. Uh, we can do this or this, and the, these these all spend the same 100% bonus, so it's better to do this instead. It's ahead of time, but we get the bonus for an ahead of time tech, and we can uh, research this tech uh, in like without the ahead of time penalty. So it's better to use the bonus on uh, a tech that is ahead of time. So let's start this. Also, uh, as uh, we are a brown ideology faction, uh, nation, we can actually um, manually declare a war goal. But, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you how a World War II scenario would uh, actually ensue. Because we are going to annex Austria and Czechoslovakia with focuses and uh, declare war on Poland, Netherlands, Belgium, France and United Kingdom and uh, Denmark and Norway and also Switzerland 
uh, with our focuses. So we don't really uh, also Luxembourg not to leave them out. <laughs> but uh, if you want, you can declare wars on other countries like uh, Romania, Bulgaria, um, the Baltic nations, the Sweden, Finland maybe. But uh, you don't really need to do that. So also, let's say you want to deploy uh, the divisions automatically. You can just click here and click the front line that you want the thing to go and they will automatically be assigned to that uh, army when they are ready to be deployed so you'll see this number rising up and we are ready for the the infantry equipment guys uh, MIA so I'm just going to pick uh, soft attack and reliability and let's continue on United Kingdom dominates Dutch trade negotiations so Germany and uh, United Kingdom have this uh, thing, Gateway to Europe. Uh, it's about uh, like handling Netherlands, but whatever you do, like if you keep clicking this non-stop, UK will win anyway, because the Netherlands will uh, side with them, and UK will side with them, of course, and they will win. So don't spend your PP on this. As you can see, we, like we have four divisions now. And as they are getting deployed, they will just join that army. Construction is done. Let's continue with construction two. The Spanish Civil War is here. I'm not going to bother sending guys to Spain for the sake of this video, but you can do that. How to do that is to you right click the brown side of the faction, even though they are not aligned. They have a lot of brown uh, ideology support. And you just say send volunteers and you can send two divisions. So. You can just send them and send air volunteers as well and get a little bit of army XP before your war. But I'm not going to do that just to simplify this video. We have another 150 PP. We can actually move out to extensive conscription, but I think we have a lot of men, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, we can instead maybe get war support and uh, brown ideology support or maybe something else like uh, it, uh, it matters on like what you want to do. You can also get the Chief of Army and get the Army Offense guy. I'm going to actually hire the War Support guy. And then later on I'm going to get the Chief of Army. And start getting the guys for the Military High Command. Let's continue with this. Also, for the, for the focuses that require manpower on the field, you can check how many men you have. When you hover over this, as you can see, it says uh, army 623k and in the field it's 364k. So we need to make that number go up until we have 950 men on the field so that we can actually declare war on Poland. Also, we have one army XP and that's because we are training our troops. It just gives a little bit, bit of uh, trickle of XP but uh, it's helpful. So I'm going to go with concentrated industry this time, but both sides are fine. I have seen a lot of discussions about which side is the best, but uh, they are pretty much very close. If you don't plan on playing until like 1950 or something, because like if you're playing up to 19 1950, this gives 10% factory output and this gives 15%. So if you do all five of them, this uh, concentrated actually gives 25% more factory output. And uh, the, the bonuses you get from this first is good early on, but uh, they're, they're worse than uh, concentrated as the game uh, goes on. Uh, the concentrated is also good if you're not really switching uh, any uh, technologies for your uh, production lines. So I'm just going to go with uh, concentrated this time, but you can also go with uh, this first if you want. So with this, let's do production efficiency gain again. Okay, we have built almost all of our military factories. Let's start building more. And let's get the army offense guy. Now we are going to start getting army XP. KDF is done. We can get the research slot, let's get it. Let's do radio.
Let's also organize our navy a little bit. Switzerland decides to whatever, whatever. Let's push for a harsher sentence. Why not? Just checking if we have the transport and we do. Uh, with air we can do range improvements. Let's do that. Fighter and carrier fighter. Okay. This is the light aircraft designer. We need that. And we need tungsten now. So let's buy some tungsten from Portugal. Construction 2 is done. Uh, do we need anything? Yes we do. But they are further away from uh, the techs. We have a lot of tanks. Okay, so we can actually get the logistics company. Let's do that. We have our new research slot. Now I can do Rhineland. We have the new research slot. Uh, we can get the MP, but we don't really need the MP. So let's actually start um, making... Oh, this is two years away. Let's start with this instead. 400 days, but it's fine. Also, you can capitulate France easily by dropping paratroopers, but uh, with Germany you don't need paratroopers to do that. Okay, let's check if we need... Uh, we, we have another guy to hire. Because we have a lot of uh, PP now. Prince of Terror is good, but it's good later on. Uh, we can also hire this guy for political power gain. War Industrial is, al is also good because uh, it gives military uh, construction speed. So... I don't know, all these options are good. Um, we don't need a lot of political power because... We already got what we basically needed. So I'm going to hire uh, Himmler uh, for the wars later on. Also, this guy helps us get the brown, more brown ideology. So we get a, a, a little bit of more stability from that. Let's do this. Also, we have a lot of army XP. We can do a professional officer core. So that we get more army XP. Also with every 5 XP we can start switching these to this. Rheinland is done. And we can do Anschluss now. We now have 178 uh, political power, so let's go up to extensive conscription. You don't need to do this, but uh, it's it's better to have this. We could also go up to uh, war economy as well. Maybe do that next. Okay, we have the range improvements. Let's continue with these. And the game says... We have, uh, we, we are not getting the rubber we should be getting from Siam. So let's cancel this and start buying it from British Malaya, maybe. We need more tungsten. We complete the radio. Let's continue with radio detection. Logics company is completed. Let's continue with this. So, uh, I'm not going to use mechanized this game, and we are just going to use motorized for basically uh, for supply. So, 
we can actually get um, production cost 5% because like breakthrough we're not using the trucks or mechanized to attack so we can get this also we have um, let's switch up this support company oh we, we can't do that okay the we can switch up artillery I think yep let's save this and the trucks and after all that we can start uh, build, building up our uh, air force so let's do this instead okay concentrated one is done Also, if you click just once, it uh, trains everyone. If you shift click it, it trains the units that are need that require training to get up to level three. Anschluss is complete. Now uh, we want to do dancing or war eventually, so we can do research eastern claims. Or we can do demands to Dayton land now. So I'm just checking how many guys we have on the field. That's 575k. So let's actually uh, try to do this. If we push everyone and start training again. Uh, yeah, we, we have the enough man to actually do this now. So let's demand to Dayton land then. Let's split these guys up. And put them on the border with Netherlands. Anschluss is complete. Denmark offers trade. We are going to accept this, but they are going to cancel it anyway, so it doesn't matter. So we have Anschluss to Austria, so they have given us their army. Let's switch these, up, these guys up to our normal infantry. And let's actually make another army group and put them on the border with France. Let's also switch up to war economy. As you can see, Denmark cancels trade agreement. Yugoslavia, let's put the squeeze on them, why not? Okay, we have more factories because we launched Austria. So uh, we can actually do this and maybe build more fighters and cast. Let's buy more rubber. The war hasn't started yet, but as soon as it starts, uh, we are going to send an attaché to Japan. conference we got to Dayton now we can do this uh, radio propaganda we don't need to do this we have a lot of war support so there is no need did the war start yes it did we can send an attaché they are not going to accept why not too low opinion Let's improve relations a little bit. And now we can stop improving relations and we have the attaché on Japan. Now we are going to get a lot of uh, XP from Japan. So with this, let's continue with uh, soft attack and breakthrough for the infantry. You can also click this and get this notification. Refresh the guns. Uh, when you send an attaché, the enemy of the country that you sent attaché to are going to send diplomatic protests. You can just say, we, we are going to send where we please.
and this is the fighter um, MIA. Uh, let's get, uh, let me see, range and naval attack, that's not bad. But this is the way to go forward, so let's get this. So now that we have a lot of PP again, uh, we can think about what should we do next. Uh, we can get the high commands, but I want to get the chief of air force. Uh, let's get the let's get Göring. Radio detection. We can continue with the next one. We can also build uh, radars now. So I'm just going to build radars, and when you Okay, so when you click, it uh, puts the radar on the bottom. When you uh, control click, it puts the radar production to the top. And let's say you want to build civilian factories. This also works with radar, but we can just build one of them. So I can show you the, how to do this with radar. But let's say you want to build civilian factories. And you want to build all available civilian factories on this land. So if you click once, it will add one to the bottom. If you shift click it, it builds all available to the bottom. And if you control shift click it, then it builds all available to the top. So that's how I can just uh, queue up to these. Let's continue. Fate of Czechoslovakia. We can also deploy these guys. 21 more divisions. Let's put one division to here. And 20. Uh, how I did that was. Okay, let, let me just show you. If I have 20 divisions and I want half of them to join this army, I just press S and right click. And I select this again, press S and right click again. So. So I'm just checking my armies, like how many armies do I need? I need one army to attack from this side, Konigsberg, into Poland. I need two armies here to attack Poland. And this army is going to hold the French uh, line. And this army is going to attack to Netherlands and Belgium and then into France. Concentrated 2 is done. What can we do? Okay, let's continue with this, I guess. So, we have a lot of artillery, but we are going to use them uh, when we switch the um, infantry template. Let me check these templates to see if they have another, anything special. No. Okay, uh, we actually can put the cavalry on the... And I like using local police force. That depends on what you want to do, but uh, I like uh, the local police force here. So we have actually we, we we need a little. Okay, we have a lot of trucks. We can stop producing trucks, and we have we need a lot of support equipment. So let's put one more to support equipment. Maybe two more actually, and then to this and this and this. Okay. Let's start with Hemi MGs. The question of Yugoslavia, let's put the skis on them again. Fate of Czechoslovakia, you can do whichever one you want, but uh, I just picked the bottom option to get everything. And we can do research Eastern Claims. We can also demand Slovenia and uh, get Yugoslavia, but let's just go with Danzigor War. So we don't want to dismantle anything because it's gonna cost PP and construction. Let's ignore that. So now we have Czechoslovakia. We can remove these and put our army like this to conquer Poland.
uh, let's start uh, organizing our armies. So with uh, Field Marshal, you need a lot of attack and you need a brilliant strategist or the inflexible strategist. But brilliant strategist is the best. And uh, we have, okay, so when you when you see a guy like uh, Enric von Mainstein is uh, a good candidate. Also is Hans Guderian. So when you take uh, Walter Model, he already has clicked defensive doctrine instead of offensive doctrine. And offensive doctrine gives, gives plus one attack. So we're not going to use Walter Model for our, uh, for, as, as a f um, field marshal. So I'm going to check uh, Von Manstein and he hasn't clicked anything. And Hans Guderian hasn't clicked anything either. So we can pick whatever, uh, whichever one we want. And let's just pick this guy, let's promote him. And then pick him for the field marshal. And we can give him aggressive assaulter as well as offensive doctrine. And we can give Charismatic as well. The Division Recovery Rate is really good. So the best ones for the Field Marshal are Aggressive Assaulter and Offensive Doctrine. Also Logistics Wizard and also Adaptable. Adaptable is probably the best thing you can get on any General or any Field Marshal. So For Generals, you can pick whatever you want, but let's pick uh, Rommel. And uh, actually, let's pick Rommel for this guy because it has tanks. You can also sort on my attack and assign by that, like that. This guy is infantry officer, so that's better to hire him. We have a lot of, another field marshal. Uh, you can actually give this to uh, Walter Model because the second army group is not really imp in, like important. So like that, we have our uh, generals and field marshals. Let's start hiring our military high command. We want the infantry guy first. Uh, let's also edit our template. Let's add artillery, 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 and another artillery. So it's 30 width. There we go. We also don't need all this infantry, but uh, let's keep them up. Let's see. So we have a lot of infantry equipment, but we need a lot of artillery. So let's cut the infantry equipment. Uh, let's give almost all of those to artillery. And we need tungsten and rubber. The radar is complete. Let's get survivability studies. Okay, let's actually use Chanel division for our garrisons. There we go, now they don't need artillery. And we can decommission cavalry brigade and this also. Okay. Now we can do Danzig or War. We have Memel now. That's good. You know what? We don't really need these guys, so we can just delete them. Let's check our supply situation. So we don't need infantry equipment, but we need a lot of artillery and support equipment. So I think this is fine. Uh, we should also get uh, more fighters and casts to deploy. By the way, you can deploy like uh, normally, or you can just click this quick deploy and check fighter and casts. And you can shift click these to deploy a lot of uh, planes like that. We don't really want Guerrilla Fighter for Erwin Rommel, so let's ignore that. Okay. 
but we can actually do this. No, this is the cast one. Okay. Production efficiency, that's good. So, uh, our troops are actually, like, they need a lot of artillery. So, when that happens, like, we, we are... We are definitely not ready to fight yet, right? So you can actually take two artilleries back, but we don't want 24 combat with, so we can add infantry instead for now, and then we, later on we can just switch them up. So with this, let's check. We need 4.4 artillery instead. Who can we hire? We can hire the army logistics guy. Let's do that. And we are almost at war. Let's stop these and get ready for uh, the war. So we are going to attack UK and Poland. We are not going to attack France. And that is because there is a thing called the Magino Line. So what the Magino Line is... Uh, the state of Alsace Lorraine. This uh, state has a lot of fortifications. As you can see here, they have land fort level 10, and they have level uh, level 10 forts all the way to here. And if you check here, there is zero. And Luxembourg has zero also. Belgium has zero. Netherlands has zero. So what we are going to do, as Germany did in real life. We are going to attack Belgium and Netherlands and Luxembourg and then to France from the unprotected lands of the northern side. So that's why the focus is called around Maginot because we don't want to attack France from Maginot line. We are going to attack them around the Maginot line. So Poland refuses ultimatum. We have complete dancing or war. We can also do around Magino at this state. So, uh, we, as we check Poland, they are uh, guaranteed by United Kingdom, of course. And France is in allies. So, if we declare war on Poland, we are going to be at war with United Kingdom and also France. So, I'm going to set my navy up for naval invasion support to these two pieces of land. You don't want to go to English Channel. In fact, do this. So that your ships cannot go into English Channel. Because in English Channel, you're just gonna get killed. So, uh, this army is gonna attack from the north. This army is going to attack from the, uh, the the north side, the northwest side. And this army is going to attack from the south. And this army is going to navally invade. We are ready to navally invade. This army is going to attack Netherlands, but not yet. And this army is going to stay put. So, uh, Hungary is willing to join us, so let's ask for military access. And Poland refuses to see Danzig. We can invite them into our faction. Can we invite Italy into our faction? Not yet. But that doesn't really matter. We don't need to call Hungary into our war. We don't need, we don't need their help. So, we can just declare war. So, um, we don't want to give him the field of command. We don't need war bonds. We don't need this. Okay. So, we need to actually start. Okay, so when it comes to planes, you can do either of those, these two things. I'm going to show them. So, you can just click them up. So, this is fighter and tactical bomber. You can just send them to here and put them on Poland and you can put them for air security and uh, close air support. You can also select these and do the same. And these. Or you can just select them up and right click to an army group. So you assign them to the army. This is not optimal because they are going to be like sent to uh, where you are not actually fighting. So if you are micromanaging and sending them uh, 
assigning them one by one, that's going to be more efficient. But uh, if you don't want to bother with that, you can just right click them to an army and they'll just um, try to do their best and uh, be organized on their own. So you can do both of those things. So I'm just going to assign these to Rommel. Uh, these guys are tactical bombers and fighters. Also, if you don't know which kind of like where your planes are or which kinds of planes you're not using, you can click this and it's gonna select you. Let, let's just, this is a fighter. Let's put them up for here. Naval bombers. You can use them for the North Sea. And uh, let's see what happens. Also, I want to uh, show another thing. When you're attacking, there's a thing called uh, the, like which kind of execution you want to do. So if you are doing carefully execute battle plans, your troops will actually be careful. What that means is they're not going to attack unless they are sure to win. And they're not going to move into empty provinces if that means that you are going to uh, like overextend your front line. So they will actually be very passive. Uh, balance is balance, so that's uh, very straightforward. I'm, I usually use balance, and aggressively means they're going to attack no matter what, and if they think that there is a chance to win, they're going to attack, and that means they're going to move into empty provinces, get like uh, get into fights uh, as much as possible. But this is also not optimal because let's just say there is a division here and there is an empty piece of land here. So what you would want to do is to move into the empty province of land because you can conquer without fighting. But what these guys will, will do is to attack the division, defeat it, and then move up to here. And then maybe move up to here to get the empty province. So, But uh, using the balance is actually the best. So this is good for if you are fighting with infantry. But if you are using tanks, you don't want to do this. You actually want to... Uh, click the divisions and attack manually with them. But we're not using tanks, we are using infantry, and I'm just going to show you how to conquer like whatever piece of land you want to conquer with Germany with just infantry. So let's... Uh, I want to slow down the game a little bit. I normally don't do this, but I want to show you like how the game is gonna work. So I'm going to unpause, and uh, Poland has called United Kingdom, and we are at war with Poland, France, and UK. So as you can see, our naval invasions are not moving yet, but if we get some things happen in the seas, we can actually uh, pull the British Navy from the uh, Eastern North Sea and also the North Sea, and we can actually naval invade them. We can also invite uh, Italy. Also, I'm going to invite Italy to our war because they have a big navy and they can actually uh, do what I just mentioned about uh, pulling British Navy from the North Seas. Poland has joined allies, that's fine. So I, I don't really need to do anything. I, I'm just waiting and my army is doing what it needs to do. As you can see, like almost all green bubbles and we are conquering uh, Poland. You can also like manually task them. Let's just say you want to cut the Polish army. You can do this, but it's not required. Hungary wants to send us expeditionary forces. We don't need those. So I'm going to speed up the game. As you can see, they, they have like they are not a match for our uh, huge army. You can also select the armies and attack like this. And our naval invasions are launching. That's perfect. We are almost done with Poland and we are attacking uh, United Kingdom. Industrial land appropriation. We don't need this. Uh, but we need the army regrouping guy, so we need 100 PP for that. And we have new dockyards, let's just put another convoy group, that doesn't matter. Uh, 
we have landed. Let's try to capture Hull. I'm pausing and unpausing to see what happens. Let's get Nottingham. Let's get Leeds. Uh, we also have a airport now. 2,000 planes. We don't need the air force on Poland. So I'm just going to pull these guys. Put them up here and use them here. Also, as... You see, we are almost done with the war, so we can put these up, put these guys up for aggressive, so that we are done much quickly. Also, we have 167 army XP, so let's just spend it. I don't like mobile war, uh, warfare doctrine, so I'm just going to get to. I, I suggest grand battle plan if you are using battle plans like I'm using, or superior fire power is also good. So I'm just going to get this. War with France is passed because we are already at war with France. Uh, Ron Mojino is completed. Uh, let's do Operation Wesserbink. I can't read it. And now we have a war goal on Netherlands. Let's declare war. And let's conquer Netherlands. We still don't have a port yet, but we will in, in a little while. And we have a port now. And we have these troops. Let's delete this. And these guys. And send them over. Uh, also, we can just select these guys and send them over as well. Poland has capitulated, that's great. So we can use these guys for Belgium maybe. And these guys are kind of unemployed. <laughs> Let's send them over to United Kingdom. I don't really suggest using a lot of army in a, like a small piece of land, but uh, let's see what happens. Also, the trucks move really fast, so you can capture a lot of land with trucks. We have the artillery tech. I'm not going to switch them. Let's let's just switch them off. Why not? Oh, at the as the war started, we we are lacking a lot of rubber, so let's just buy them from Siam and from Liberia. And we can get uh, tungsten from Portugal now because the uh, UK is actually blocking us. So let's buy them from Soviet Union and a little bit from Sweden. Hmm. We can't get any rubber again. Okay, that's fine. Bulgaria, okay, fine.
Let's hire the army regrouping guy. We have Luxembourg to attack as well, but uh, we don't need to do that right now. Let, actually, let's just do it. London has fallen. Netherlands has fallen. Uh, actually, I don't want to finish the war before I declare war on the other two smaller nations. Let's get these guys to the Denmark for border and let's declare war on Norway. Uh, we don't want the coup in uh, Norway. Let's declare war on Denmark as well. Also, if you could, like, if, if you want to, you can uh, conquer other nations like Spain, maybe Portugal. But uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Denmark surrenders, but uh, we are gonna make them a speed bump. Iceland declares neutrality. Let's attack Iceland, actually. If we can get them as well. Thank you, Italy. Belgium has capitulated. Italy is getting navally invaded by the British? What the hell are you doing, Italy? So fucking useless, dude. Okay, UK is done. Let's clear up the remnants. How many days? Uh, we have 60 days left. Okay, let's stop with this. Uh, we can get the infantry export. That's good. We don't need any of this. Okay, now, there is a rule in the game where if you are in at war with another nation and... Uh, let, let me just show you from here. So, we are at war with Canada, Poland, UK, whatever, whatever. So, 
what actually matters is that you capitulate the ones who are majors. So the majors we are fighting are United Kingdom and France. And we have already capitulated United Kingdom. So all that is left is France. So is if we capitulate France, we are going to win the war. But we don't want to capitulate France because if we declare another war on another nation, let's just say Switzerland, and get them into the war as well, and then capitulate France, then they are going to be in the peace deal and we can annex their country as well. So that's why I'm not attacking um, France and capitulating them immediately. So let's uh, man the borders here and uh, might as well help the useless Italians. Like the more they push, they are actually pushing into our country. We have another army, let's uh, position them here then again. Now we have this air force, we can get them and uh, put them on Italy. Let's get breakthrough. Iceland is ready. Let's declare war. You can also declare war on other nations if you want, but uh, it's not needed. We are just waiting for the uh, war goal on uh, Switzerland and we can just take them. Denmark hasn't joined allies, so we needed to capitulate them ourselves. That's done with. So probability studies is complete. Now, we are going to declare war on Switzerland, wait until they join allies, and there we go, and we can capitulate France now. There we go. We have 80% of the war score, which is going to be enough to get a lot of land. So what I'm going to do first is uh, get all of Netherlands, get all of Poland, get... Let's actually leave this Swiss to Italians. We can get Belgium, we can get Luxembourg, we can get France. We can get a lot of the UK. Let's, let's try to get as much as we can. Okay. And of course Italy wants... Okay, I'm gonna forfeit Corsica. Okay, why not? Fair enough.
Now I'm demanding this. Actually, we can demand all of it, I think. You know what? I'm gonna take it all. Okay, we can't take it all. Let's leave Tunisia, I guess. <sighs> Italy, why are you like this? Why? You really want to Jura Mountains? If I can leave it, dude. Thankfully. And we can't get any of their navies now. <laughs> but that's fine. Let's end the... Uh, be still and... Uh, yeah, we have a lot of land now. And... Fucking Italians left a piece of land. So, uh, this is how we do a war uh, in the uh, in Hearts of Iron, and it's September 1938, so pretty good. We can take Swe uh, Sweden, Finland, or the other Baltic nations. We can prepare the war against Soviet Union. We can actually fight United States very easily at this stage, like very easily. Because uh, they're not really uh, prepared now. They're still in disarmed nation and undisturbed isolation. So <laughs> we can actually take them on and just conquer them really easily. So uh, this is how you do a war in uh, Hearts of Iron and uh, win. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just uh, leave them out in the comment section. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.